Howdy guys, this is Wandering Mind 25 and this is part two of my series about my RetroPie gaming system uh, which I'm in the process of uh, still building. Um, I want to go ahead and start with the configuration of how I intend to build my uh, RetroPie, at least from the software point of view. Uh, later on we'll get to a hardware point of view where I'm actually modifying the case and doing uh, you know, wiring up and soldering and such. But in this video, we will be going through the steps on how to configure your Pi. This is where the best place to start. This is the A to Z to you know get your RetroPi running. This uh, isn't exactly up to the latest as far as uh, configuration goes. There are a few discrepancies, but not too much uh, to have to you know that you won't be able to figure out. It's pretty obvious. So if it says click on option 10 and then tells you what the option 10 is and you find out option 11 is really the the actual thing it's telling you to do, then yeah, it's pretty obvious. Anyway, this uh, website, uh, supernintendopie.wordpress.com is an awesome uh, site to just go through the steps and you'll be able to uh, build your Pi out. But I will make this video to give you uh, at least a, a walkthrough of what you'll need to do and maybe even speed through the process a bit. I'm going to break this up into a couple videos so uh, bear with me on this. So first place we want to start with is you need to have the the operating system, the OS, installed on your SD card. Um, I'm not going to go through any of the process of actually doing that but I'll show you what you need. First you need to install the uh, actual uh, image. So we'll go over to the pet rot uh, project uh, blog, which essentially is RetroPie project under the website Pet Rock blog. Sorry, I kind of screwed that up the first time. So go here, go to download section. It's easiest to just get the image file that has everything already on it, so you don't have to install pretty much anything. So download one of these. Um, when I downloaded it, it was 1.7. I don't know if they've updated it since then. Uh, they didn't have a turn option, so this might be a, a later version. So either way, download this. You'll need some applications such as uh, the Win32 Disk Imager. Uh, this right here will be what you actually use to take that image file that you just download and apply it to your SD card. You'll also need a formatter of some sort, which um, I'm sure you can find an SD card formatter uh, that'll work. If you go to the the site, there's information on how to install it uh, on here. So anyway, once you have the uh, the image installed in your SD card, this is where this site really kicks off. So you plug your uh, your network port in, your HDMI, uh, your SD card, your power cord and uh, your you know keyboard, USB hub and such. You want to find your IP address. Uh, when you turn the Pi on, when you plug it in with power, um, it should boot up automatically into the emulation station and it, start it starts to ask you how to configure or if you want to configure your uh, settings to move around in the emulation station. For the moment you just want to skip through that. Um, just hit F4 and it will bring you to a terminal screen. At that point, you can type in IF config. It does the same thing as IP config in a Windows machine. Uh, it'll display your uh, IP address. It'll look something probably like this. You know, it'll have one, two, three, four octets separated by a period. Um, and at this point, this is where I switch over to start using my PC to to manipulate the Raspberry Pi. It makes it easier so you, I can go to this website and just copy and paste commands. So for instance, this is where a new application will come in. This application is called Putty. You can go on Google, type in Putty, it's one of the first like two results you'll get. Um, it's not You don't actually install it, you just run the executable file. You can type in the IP address which you were able to acquire when you did this IF config or you can just type in the host name of the machine or the, uh, the Raspberry uh, Pi which is Raspberry Pi by default. 
So we're just going to type in Raspberry Pi and hit OK. Now, me, I've already done this, so it's not going to ask me, but a certificate warning will pop up. Just click Yes and log in. And the login is Pi and password is Raspberry. Alright, so now that we're logged in, this is essentially the same thing as if we were to be manually uh, doing anything actually on the console of the Pi. Um, but again, this way we can copy and paste commands where you can't exactly do that if you're on the station itself. The next part will be to actually configure the Pi uh, controllers for inside your uh, emulators. To do that, uh, in this case, I'm using Xbox controllers, so I'll show you how to do to install the actual Xbox receiver. To do that, we go to this website, uh, GitHub, uh, and all these links I'll add in the description so you can go straight there. What you're going to want to do is install the Xbox driver. That will be for the receiver. So in order to do that, you would uh, do a sudo apt get install xbox drv once you run that command it'll download the uh, the driver and it'll install it and you can test it out by running sudo xbox drv so I'll, I'll demonstrate that sudo xbox drv now mine's gonna error but in your case it, it will enable the driver on one single controller. You have to have a controller you know, powered on and synced up or at least attempted to sync up uh, for this to work. Um, at this point you should be able to press buttons on your keyboard and code and things like that will come on your uh, will go on your screen. Uh, that is indicating like if you press the up button you know what code that is down and so on and so forth. Um, the next step is we want when you boot up your Pi to automatically load the driver for the receiver and your controller. In order to do that, we need to have one driver for each controller. In my case, I have two Xbox controllers. So what I'll need to do is edit this file, the uh, RC local, and we will be just simply copy and pasting this code. To do that, we do sudo nano space forward slash etc slash rc dot local okay so sudo essentially means run this command uh, I guess for like root permissions something of that nature and then nano means edit uh, I, I believe it only means it in uh, like a text based way because uh, it well, it's in the text-based ways whether or not it means you can use it on more than just text so as you can see on the bottom of this in between the FI and uh, the exit code I just pasted the uh, these lines of code so that being I only have two controllers I only have two lines that are actually active and in between each driver I have the sleep command you have to have sleep in between each one but you don't need to have it for the, you know, if you're not loading any more. So it just basically means, okay, it's going to load driver for the first controller, wireless controller. See, so WID, that means wireless. If I just have ID, it's wired. So it also works for an Xbox wired controller. And then sleep. Then the second driver loads, same Xbox driver, but it runs the second time, but with for the second controller. So wireless controller 1 so controller 0 and controller 1 and being we're not I'm not installing any other ones cuz I mean really all these older games you know NES Super Nintendo Sega unless you had that fancy gizmo you only had two controllers on most of those systems so once you're done there um, again I I didn't use these other lines I put a little uh, number sign here and that uh, comments this out so this code is not ran. You hit 
control and X to exit out of the editor. Um, if you made changes, it'll ask you to save it. So you just click yes, and then it'll you know it'll list the file path and name. We don't want to change anything, so you just hit enter, and uh, and you're done. Um, that now allows your Raspberry Pi to communicate with your Xbox controllers. Uh, so as soon as you turn them on, so long as it's synced up, you'll be able to uh, interface that controller with the Raspberry Pi. And um, the next step will be to have it uh, set up so that it works with your emulation station and its ROMs. Okay, at this point I'm going to split the video up, so stay tuned uh, for part, uh, I think it is three. Uh, where I will show you how to set up the controllers within the emulation station. Uh, if you could, just you know, subscribe, uh, like, comment uh, below, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.